I really like to get here early, uh, really before anybody else even gets here. Um, an hour, hour and a half early, um, almost every single day. Um, I love the quiet before the, uh, the din of the store uh, kind of kicks in. Um, I usually I don't even turn on the lights. Um, quiet, peaceful, and this is where I get my work done. Uh, this is when I can return emails, uh, I can talk to my vendors, I can make orders, uh, although it's not that quiet right now. We still have the construction going on right behind me, but um, I do find it really peaceful. It's kind of my centering. Uh, I get to uh, think about what, what the day is going to be like and hopefully manifest some good stuff. We all have our ways of doing things here at Oliver Smith. We all have our own little uh, idiosyncratic uh, ways, but um, yeah, uh, it makes, makes for a good, good work environment. For over 40 years I have been in this business. The trust my clients have placed in me is so important. This is about continuing the growth of this business on that trust and the standard we have set. This is about what it takes to stay on top. So George and I are here uh, nice and early to film some of our YouTube videos. We usually at least get one done a week. Sometimes we'll do multiple at the same time. Um, today we're talking about- The perfect George Reed IWC. <laughs> <laughs> IWC specifically, we're talking about Top Gun editions. We just got a couple cool pieces in. So we wanted to tie that in. And I wanted to talk about like, IWC's actual tie to Top Gun and what okay. Top Gun is because I was looking around at some YouTube videos and there's some great watch reviews, but it doesn't really talk about the actual like history and how it came to be. Sure, and honestly, other than a great movie with an awesome volleyball scene, I don't know much about the connection with Top Gun. Um, so George you, keeps you, you, bringing so, up so the volleyball can... scene. <laughs> how can you not? <laughs> I know, and then you got the new movie out, so it would yep. be fun to talk about, and um, especially I think the Mojave piece is gonna it has some great hype around it. Yeah. This will be the most yeah. interesting and part. Yeah, it's a, it, and all three of them are an absolutely amazing movement, so. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. What's funny is once I got engaged, the first people to notice actually was our YouTube following and people were commenting, oh my gosh, I noticed a new ring. And then this morning actually, we were filming a couple videos and my ring with the size was getting adjusted and the jewelers had it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to put a ring on otherwise people are gonna comment on YouTube. Wait, are you no longer engaged? What happened? But no panic, we still got a wedding in October. I uh, just want to do a little follow-up to our previous video on what is going on in the watch market. Uh, last we spoke, things were pretty much in free fall. We were in the middle of the correction. Rather solid performers kind of falter lately. And uh, it's been kind of interesting to see, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, who has paper hands? Um, yeah, I can almost feel the panic out there with some people. And um, it feels like we're at the end of that road. Um, I think we're there's light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Um, what I'm seeing out there is more of a stabilization of the markets. Um, people are still asking too much. People are still uh, panic selling. But in the middle of that, we're seeing where the numbers are supposed to be. And it all feels um, corrected and right. And things are still expensive um, and things are still more than retail. But it's not that three, four, five times retail. It's more that you know, 0.5 to 1.5% retail, which makes a lot of sense considering how hard these things are to get still in today's market. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're always here to answer your questions. Four or five years ago, uh, the watch business started to get super hot. And at that point, before that, we were selling mainly new watches, some used watches, some estate watches, but we really weren't pushing into the estate pieces because we had seven or eight brands of new watches that we're selling. Okay, so when you bring your watch into a place like Oliver Smith um, to, to sell it, um, you're gonna start with me, I'm either gonna have the watch sent in, you're gonna bring it in live. First thing I do is carefully look over the watch. Uh, this is gonna tell me a real good story about the watch the life it's lived, how you've worn it, uh, the overall condition. Uh, then we have a rate tester and a demagger. So I'm gonna kind of take a listen into how the watch is running. And I'm gonna make some decisions um, based on how much work I'm gonna have to put into the watch to sell it. And then we start the process of trying to come up with a number. Um, this is where the art comes into play, where uh, kind of look for what people are asking, what they're selling for, what recent comps are, and they come with a fair number. Um, here at Oliver Smith, we've got a really good reputation for putting the customer first, doing the right thing. 
by the customer and I think that shows in, in our buying process. Right now it's a little bit more difficult. Um, the market's in a weird space, so um, we're buying with a more of a conservative attitude than an optimistic attitude. So it might not be the best time to sell to a guy like me, but um, either way your experience is gonna be great. And the worst case scenario, you're gonna leave with a lot of information. New this week, really cool Panerai. This is the Carbotech Marina Militaire. That was a special edition experience piece yeah. to go train with the Italian Navy SEALs, yeah. or their version of the Navy SEALs. Uh, but we're just kind of chatting because we don't know if it actually happened. Yeah, it's, well, and, and my, my joke with this watch is always like, like, okay, so if I buy this watch, can I make my buddy go train with the Navy right. SEALs? Because I don't want like, to do I that. I don't need to do that. But, can I watch and have a cocktail? Yeah, so, so there were there were a few of these pieces throughout the collection where they did really, really limited runs, like 30 pieces. Right. And this they were all supposed to cut 33, yeah, 33, 35, something like that on all of them. And I think this is a good number too. I think the number two or something like that on this one. Oh. Can you read that? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. I feel like we can't say. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so the, the the funny thing with these, there, there were a bunch of those little experience pieces that came out this year. I don't know if any of them happened. Um, I think COVID might have put a kibosh on all of them. I don't remember hearing about this one. Now, I know the US one happened and there's some happening. I never heard about this. Oh, that's right. We you just... were with the boutiques at the time. You probably yeah. have more than some of this than but I But this do. was an offer to the boutiques and it was really cool when it came out. We got a lot of asks for it because it's just very military. Well, You've got this that... is one of those huge frustrating yeah. things where like by the time I knew about it, it sold out. Like, like they gave it yeah. to the, I mean, it's 33 guys. You know, like, you know Panerai's got or those gals. guys or gals in their pocket. So by the time we knew about it, they were gone. I didn't have a chance to get, get even talk to anybody about them. Super cool piece though. It's actually the first one I've ever seen. Same. Yeah. Also new, I like this Panerai. Uh, the man behind the camera isn't as fond of it, but this is uh, a Mary Nostrum Panerai. This was a special edition. So the Mary Nostrum was the original officer's watch when we're going back to World War II when Panerai was making military watches. This was the chronograph version. Panerai over the years has come out with a couple different like, odes to the original Mary Nostrum, sometimes in a smaller, sometimes in a much bigger size. But look at this dial. Look, it's like a stacked step dial. That That's is cool. amazing. I, I, I don't I, see I'll that give it to you. On that right. one. Yeah. Um, for me, it's Haters. just too big. It, it, it is such a large watch. Now, don't get me wrong. We've got guys who make this watch look like a pad of Calatrava. Yeah. Yeah. We, we get the big boys in here, but um, they also do a 42 millimeter version of that. I yeah, love that. Your dad's got that watch. Yeah, I absolutely love that size. watch. Like that that's the right size for me. But um, I dig it on the right person. It, it, it's uh, if it fits you, if it fits you, get it. We got together with George again, and I'm like, "What else do you need?" And he goes, "Well, we need. I need another salesperson. I need somebody else to help me in this business." And um, he had a, a buddy who was selling with him down at uh, Tourneau by the name of Ryan Belton, and um, we w reached out to Ryan, and we're lucky enough to get him to come over to join us here too at Oliver Smith. So, like, what do I do? Like my typical day at Oliver Smith, or like, I'm just gonna. I feel like I'm just gonna ramble. When do I go? Okay. So uh, I'm Ryan Belton. I work here at Oliver Smith Jeweler. I'm one of the sales guys. Uh, a typical day for me is obviously show up to work uh, on time. Do a little bit of everything here. So I will, you know, do jewelry buys. I do watch buys. If George's not available, if Oliver's not available, I'll do the jewelry. I do a lot of texting through um, to, to actually sell the product. Uh, so a lot of my clients are actually in my phone already. But yeah, like I guess a typical day is just selling and uh, that's about it. Ryan is a extremely gifted salesperson. Uh, he really enjoys the watch business. He probably enjoys new watches or hardly worn or relatively new pieces more than he does historically uh, relevant pieces. But, you know, he his niche is really that last uh, this year to 10 year old watches that he works with. And he's turned out to be the number one salesman on our team because he's done such a fantastic job. So we've been really fortunate to have Ryan here. I think I've made my opinion real clear. I wanted to ask you what you think is going on in the watch market right now. And more importantly, where do you see it six months from now? It's a good question. Uh, so, I mean, obviously the watch market right now is kind of more of a buyer's market in my opinion. Um, not really a seller's market. Obviously the, uh, you know, every brand from Rolex to AP have gone down uh, significantly. Um, but I mean, it was a pretty crazy run up from 2020 on basically. Sure. Um, but 
Yeah, I mean, six, from, six months from now, actually, I think a little bit sooner than that, like even leading up until like November, December, we're gonna start to see a slight increase in prices. It usually is anyways, whether it's a good market or a bad market. Around the holidays, prices start to go back up, more buyers in the market, things like that. So um, obviously with a lot of COVID things aside, uh, China uh, reopening a couple months ago, uh, we're going to get a lot more of international buyers into the U.S. market. I think that uh, our market is going to come back strong, but I don't think it's going to be back where it was. Yeah. Um, where it was, you know, a couple months ago where, you know, some of these watches were 6X retail <laughs> and things like that. But uh, yeah, no, I think it will. I think in the next six months, it will definitely improve. But that's why I'm saying right now is probably the best time to buy if you're. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I completely agree. And man, I hope you're exactly right, because that would be that would be perfect. Yeah, no, absolutely. So uh, this week we're putting the finishing touches on the painting on the walls, uh, getting also the ceiling done in uh, the watchmaker's office and then getting it all prepped, getting some cabinets in here that are going to be part of the um, new bar area. Um, and then hopefully next week we're going to take down the wall and uh, then finish the floors and we'll be ready to move in. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Oliver Smith and I really appreciate your support. Hit like and subscribe and we'll see you soon.